All right, it was getting a bit too long the video, so I split it. Um, this second half is now just talking about um, how to create characters and scenes. Um, so just so you can see how that actually operates, how long it takes. That's a quite frequent question. Hopefully, performance is a bit better now as well. So let's have a look. Um, I want to create a new scene. Um, let's say I've got a new uh, scenario. I've got some of the falling sty I want to do. Another one from the F Wicked Secrets um, compendium. So I've created a subfolder here and then just say, okay, I want to create a scene. This one is going to be the town of Ahrensburg. And um, I get my little sheet here. Um, you can, there's a new module out that sets all the defaults for you, but I'm just doing that manually here. I want no grid on it. Um, don't need a grid, gridless, it's absolutely fine. Background color, I'm gonna set to black because I prefer that, looks better. And um, the next thing is then to choose the picture. Now I uploaded this particular one already. Um, and I can see my ineffectual filing system here. So I go to Vasen, I go to Song, and Ahrensburg Karte, that's it. So, right. I could link an audio playlist to it, weather effect, all that. I'm just going to leave for now. I want to show you how quick it can be to add stuff. So, Ahrensburg is now popping up here on my, on my right, and there's the map. Um, what I'd like to do, you've seen that on the previous screen, is I'd like to put a couple of pictures on. For that I use tiles, um, so I go here on the left of the tiles menu, I go to the place tile, and um, actually I need to look at which one I want to place. So let's have a look, what have I got here? Portraits and art. I've got a lovely picture here of uh, St. Nicholas's Church. So the Church of St. Nicholas here is on the map. I want to illustrate that. Um, it's the old point and click adventure sort of thing. I, Gabriel Knight, things like that that I really like. And having a, when a location becomes available, having a picture pop up for it, I think that's a really nice prompt for the, for the players. So just resize it until it, I sort of like the size of it. Um, right. Let's pull that down a bit, see how it fits, resize it again. Church of St. Nicholas, I now have a location picture. I want it to be slightly scanned, so it looks more like a, an evidence board and a crime fiction, so I'm going to rotate it by, say, 12 degrees. And maybe I'm just going to move it onto the edge. That looks a bit better. So that was one. If I wanted to upload a new tile from Fresh, I'll just show you how that works. Um, pictures and art again, choose a file. That pops up your, your local um, folder, usually quite quick. This is slowed down with the screen recorder again. And I go to my um, prepared little folders here. So I've got Song of the Falling Star. And let's say I want to, uh, what could I add? Uzel Castle, or Sarima as it's called these days. I found an ancient postcard which looks really good on here. So in my postcard, it's just uploading it in the background now. It's uploaded now. There it comes. Pop that onto here. And again, this usually is faster. And then it is peering now. Okay, I want to tilt that again. Well, maybe I won't. Um, I'll just re reposition it. So I just grab it from here, put it where I want it down here. So for this sort of storytelling, for the theater of mind telling, uh, you don't need battle maps. You don't need scales. It says 100 meter down here, but I'm not going to go and configure a grid for that. This is just very easy for me to say, all right, um, you have now met somebody, you've met a character. Um, he's up here if you want to see him again. It's a good visual prompt. The pastor, for example, is up here. Both. There he is. And if I wanted to say the Kaiserlings, where have I? I don't have her. Ah, let's take another character. Frida's at the sanatorium. Then that's good enough for me. Yeah, to just be able to move them around and say, where's everybody right now? So you can enhance this. You can put music on it. You can put um, weather on it. You can put different lighting on it. But I just want to keep it simple. If I wanted to create a new character, I don't think I've shown you this before. Um, Let's assume I have one here, just call him Niels. Oh, I've created Niels already. Oh, okay. 
call him Victor. I don't have a Victor yet. Yeah, so you get this character sheet, which is provided by uh, Perfectro. He, he coded this character sheet. I'm sure you know, if enough people clamor for it, he'll make it a bit prettier than this, but it works absolutely fine. So I enter my character creation attributes. Not not 30, that's a bit high. Um, and three, for example. Three, for example. Skills, what's he good at? He's good at physique. Let's make it uh, make him a bit more agile. He's fought before and he's really, really strong. Um, you just key these in here, wherever you want to. So that's the first bit. Next bit, combat. Has he got any armor? Has he got any weapons? All right, this is where it comes in handy if you've pre-configured some weapons. Let's assume, yeah, I haven't picked pictures for everything. He's got a revolver. Drop that on here. Straight away, you've got all the stats there. Really simple, really quick. Um, critical injuries, he doesn't have any yet. Talents, um, what shall we make him? Shall we make him a soldier? So I go to my, my talents tree here. Talents, soldier, what are they? You can, of course, search up here in the search box. Yeah, so I can't remember. Officer, he's actually called. Gentleman or tactician. So if you, you knew what you're looking for, all you have to put in is tact. Grab it from here, put it across. And he might, so you get the full description here. Whatever you put into the, the items will pop up here. That's really neat. I really like that because you don't have to click through to another screen for that. Um, he, could, he could have a general talent somewhere. Yeah, maybe he's got a general talent of sixth sense. That would work. That goes there. Right. Um, gear. Has he got any gear? Right. Again, whatever you code in, you've got available. I haven't I've put most of the stuff from the book on, not quite everything. Let's say he's got a compass. Yeah, so again, drag and drop it on, and there it comes. Yeah, so you've got the bonus. This is not automatically applied, but that's fine because you only get a bonus in certain circumstances. So I don't want automatically to be all learning to be boosted by one. That would just be wrong. And um, give him maybe, I don't know, paraffin lantern. All right, which doesn't have any bonuses. You can see in the dark, that's bonus enough. Notes, of course, you can put motivation, trauma, dark secret, all that sort of stuff on, memento, um, and the characters have got their own notes there. So let's assume you also want to have a quick picture here. Um, I've uploaded a few already. So a look, tokens, Vason. Let's, let's give him, or should I give him the officer picture? That's a nice one. And there you go. You've got a, a nice little portrait of him. I just use um, Token Tool to, to turn the artwork into this with a sort of uh, coppery ring around it that looks quite good, I think. So you enter all the information here from character creation. Um, once you want to roll something, just I'm not quite sure whether I showed that in the previous video. If you want to, for example, do close combat, you just click here on close combat. It pops up the confirmation. Do you have anything that gives you a bonus? Maybe you've got a weapon, maybe you've got a situational bonus and assist. Just hit roll and you get the successes here. The Vason 6 is a success. It counts the successes and it turns green for success as well, just in case uh, you can't count to one. The um, nice thing about this one as well is you can push, but you have to do it from the character sheet. You can't do that from the result like in Coriolis. So here in the character sheet title bar, you've got push. If you click on push there, you can see it's the same role. It inherited one success, it re-rolled the other, so now it's two successes. And it does not automatically select a, uh, a condition. You would normally have to select a condition to, to get a re-roll done, um, but you can choose which one. So I quite like that it's not automatic. So for example, close combat, he's now exhausted, right? If I did the same roll again, um, close combat again with the same thing. You can see it's got a minus one bonus because it counts how many conditions you've got for that section. So that works quite nice, nicely. Right, so that's that, that's the scene. Um, if I wanted to have a, a quick journal note as well, um, I'm not gonna spoil anything here, don't worry. So let's say this is the introduction of the, um, the scenario. Oh, what's going on here? There we go. There's my introduction. I can then say uh, society meet at 
Castle Gillenkreuz, which means Golden Cross, by the way. So if I then wanted to, for example, compile a few things. So who are they meeting? I go to my actors and I want to say, oh, they are meeting Linda is there. Yeah, just dragged and dropped it. Okay, gives me the, the shortcut here. Um, what else could they be finding? They could be finding a journal entry from, well, these are characters, a journal entry from this. They might find an invitation letter. Right, that goes there. They might find, um, I don't know, I don't have so much here, but I might want to say, oh, there's a list of melee weapons you need to check up on. No, doesn't work this one. No, there we go, just laggy. Save entry. And what it looks like, you get these shortcuts. So if I wanted to say they're meeting, who are they meeting? All right, let's have a click on here. And there it is. Everything I needed is just there. And the invitation, yeah, you've got the copy and paste here of the text. You can also show it as the beautifully calligraphed um, handwritten letter by touching the image. A lot of my players actually love to see this, but not to read it. So they immediately would switch across to the text after they say, oh, that looks nice. They would just go to text and then they're able to read it and clear. Yeah. Um, right, what else could I create? That's probably it for now, actually. Uh, if you if you want to see something in particular, um, then please do ask. But the key here really for me is if you wanted to use just as a storytelling tool, the character sheets are very, very easy to use. But even if you didn't want to use them, you can use them as PDFs. Everybody can see them. They can keep some notes here. You can show some pretty pictures. And with the um, dice tray roller, I can't quite remember what the module is called. You always have the D6 down here. So you could just say, uh, roll your 86. Dice so nice. Would do a 3D roll. There you go. Unfortunately, they're not vase and fight yet. And if you wanted to see the sixes, you can click up here and just count how many sixes you've got. One, two, three successes. Excellent. Yeah, so you didn't have to configure anything. You can just use it as a show and tell tool. All right. So I hope that was useful um, and probably takes away some of the fear some people seem to have about this taking ages to set up. If you want to run it very simply, it only takes a few minutes to set up. Well, enjoy it. And it, oh, one question I always get is which modules can, am I currently using? Um, let's have a look so I can refer you to this. If I just go to the active modules, um, these are the ones I currently have in place. Not all of them are necessary for what I've been showing you right now. Okay, that's it for this time. Thank you very much.